Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Game, and it's something now on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today we're coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Blazing Passion. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright, I've made space to... This, this music does not match what's going on. I've made space to set up the swing, which takes a good, a good chunk of the room. Did I... No, I did not. Oh, okay, one second, y'all. I have to, uh... Do my little, uh... Quick save real quick, one second. All right, y'all, I'm back, all right? <laughs> this is quite a turn. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Am I making that much of an impression on you, hmm? Oh, you have no idea. Besides, I've always had a thing for felines. Meow. My meowing takes him by surprise and he laughs at it without losing the desire in his eyes. And meanwhile, I'm putting on my latex gear. Hmm, you look really tight in that, fits you perfectly. I wink at him and massage my crotch to show off my dick encased in shiny black rubber, and he moves forward to fondle it himself, which elicits a small grunt of pleasure from me as I lick, my, lick his lips. What's my name again? Luke. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Then I kiss him for a long time, seeking out his tongue with my own to lick it with an increasingly palpable desire. He wrestles with me in this sensual embrace, letting his hands slide down my back to take hold of my buttocks, which he massages for a time. Unfortunately, I have to break this pleasant moment. Let me add a little atmosphere. I grab a large vinyl record that I had set aside before placing it in the record player. Hellish Devotion. I've listened to this album over and over and I can't get enough of it. Oh, that's pretty old school. There's a lot of good stuff to be found in the past and this music is one of them. I meant the record player. That's my little treasure. While swaying to the music, I approach my playmate and grab him by the jaw to offer him a kiss on the lips. How about you put me in the swing now, my big bad wolf? You impatient little guy, but that's all I've been waiting for. While he's pushing me towards the swing, I take the opportunity to, ha to have a look at the alarm on my bedside table. 1510. We've still got a bit of time. So it is with a touch of las lasciviousness that I settle down. My head turned towards the door to my bedroom, suspended above the ground. Can you give me the mask? It's part of the experience, after all. The wolf smiles and grabs the gas mask, observing it from every angle, then whistles as he hands it to me. Is it a real one? I've got it. It's got working valves and filters, and the lenses look solid. Mm-hmm. Oh, I brought this in, and I bought this in an army surplus. Oh, by the way, I won't be able to communicate very well once I put it on. I'll, it'll muffle my voice. All right. And before you put it on, aren't we supposed to have a safe word or something like that? Don't worry about that. I hope this music isn't copyrighted. Don't worry about that. We're not going to do anything extreme. Are you sure? You're going to be pretty restrained, though. I've got experience. I'll be fine. He nods, looking a little hesitant, then gently touches the straps, examining them one by one as I put on my mask. I guess he must have read how important it is to have a safe word, and I can't blame him. But it's not in my priorities. So, you like to be very tightly bound, hmm? I just nod while breathing slowly into my mask to calm myself down as much as possible. Ah. As he closes the multiple leather straps on my legs and arms, the wolf watches me with a commanding expression, and this causes me to shiver with excitement. Each time he walks past me, he lets his fingers slide against my latex body, which helps me relax a little. I wonder what I'm going to do to you once you're bound and completely at my mercy. Unfortunately, it won't come to that. As Arthur closes the padlocks to finish tying me up, I close my eyes and give in to this feeling of total comfort, coupled with the superb sensation of confidence in my partner and the music transports me to another existence, without pain, without regrets. I am him, and he is me. As I surrender to these feelings, tears come to my eyes, but fortunately my mask prevents Arthur from seeing them. So that's how he felt at that moment. He was comfortable, he trusted me, and I betrayed him. When I open my eyes, I can see that Arthur is lifting his snout and sniffing the air with a worried look. Pierre, smell something burning. In the very next moment, flames erupt from all around us. Devouring my bed, my curtains, and my desk. I'll soon be in total symbiosis with you, Luke. What the fuck is happening? Oh my god, it disappeared! Fuck, what? A total panic takes hold of Arthur, and I can only feel sorry for him. I know too well what he's about to go through. Wait, Pierre, don't worry, I've got this. The wolf grabs a towel and tries to smother one of the fires, but soon realizes the flames are spreading too quickly. I I'll get you out! And he starts nervously fumbling around my padlocks to slide in the various keys but I know he won't have time to free me. Shit, shit! He looks around. Maybe he's looking for another solution or a way out. All I know is that the smoke is going to be deadly for him if he stays. I didn't lock the door, so run away, you idiot! Leave me! And live! 
I take no pleasure in seeing this Hispanic reactions. My only comfort is in being able to share the experience. And finally, I see him run out of the room without even turning around. Before long, the heat of the fire is closing in on me, and the flames reach my paws. At first, I feel nothing. Then, it, it burns! My whole body goes tense as I scream at the top of my lungs. What the fuck is going on in this game? I must endure it. I must be punished. The latex smolders around me as the fire slowly makes its way up my body, beginning to consume my legs. Suddenly, there he is in front of me, like a latex angel clawing his way out of the fiery pits of hell. Amidst my screams, his screams, our screams, I manage to utter these words. I'm almost there, Luke. And then nothing. When I open my eyes, I'm on a bed and my breathing is heavy, even though I no longer have my mask. My body is covered in bandages, and as soon as I try to move, a sharp pain grips me. But I can't scream anymore, either. All I can manage is a pitiful groan. I... I don't understand. I'm supposed to have turned to dust. I must... join his windswept ashes. Time passes. I don't know exactly how many days. I'm fed... Changed, no longer really in control of my body. And eventually, I'm... It's not a nurse I see entering my room, but Arthur, accompanied by a cop. He looks at me with some sorrow in his eyes, but he shouldn't. I don't deserve him. Sorry about the policemen. They're afraid I'll seek revenge on you. The wolf stumbles over his every word as I try to figure out what he's doing here. He deserves better than me. Anyway, Anna told me you were awake, and she asked me to tell you that she stopped by to see you when you were still asleep. I... They told me what happened with your ex. I'm sorry you couldn't save him, but even knowing that, it's obvious I can't forgive you for what you did. Yet, I saved you, and I'm not entirely sure that's what you wanted, so I've got a bit of responsibility from now on. My eyes linger on the few patches of burnt fur on his body. He was injured in the process. Why would you do that for someone like me? He obviously catches my gaze. I went back to my car. I knew there was a knife there, and came back, but you were unconscious, so I cut your restraints and dragged you out of there. On hearing that he had accomplished what I had been able to do, tears will up in my eyes once more. I have no right to this compassion. I only have the right to pain. I'll be there to help you recover. I'd like to try and make you feel better, if that's possible. He just stands there, silent, watching me with his usual concern. And I'm left with nothing but my eyes to cry. What the fu- What the fuck? What the hell? Why? Oh my god, that took such a fucking turn! Oh my Christ! Yo, what the fuck? This was- oh! Oh my god! Oh my god, I guess passion wasn't the only thing blazing that night. Jesus. Yeah, wow, y'all, that was unexpectedly dark. God, out of nowhere, too. Well, I mean- I saw some of the signs that maybe something... Maybe something was wrong. Or not quite as it seemed, and... Yeah, we were right. Uh, yeah, the comments, various comments were right that this was gonna take a turn. Um, yeah, y'all, so that's Blazing Passion. Um, don't die in a fire, please. Y'all take care of yourselves? Oh my god, this game makes me want to hug somebody. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can, it always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you, Bum Beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our two gold-tier patrons, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye